end of season discussion, I guess. A summary of. Um, I think it's my summary of the club and where what we were able to achieve as a club over the five years in our existence and then over the last two years, what it looks like for us and where we're heading moving forward, I guess. Um, so to give you guys, to fill you guys, and Jesse and I sat down um, post-season and I know personally I had to reflect on what winning looks like and in this environment. Um, obviously, when you grow up, or I know for me personally, it was always trying to win a Premiership Cup. That's what everyone aspired to do. But what I've realised is um, I've spent more time at VFLW level and, and even at AFLW sometimes winning can be construed quite differently in what it looks like um, for a number of reasons. I think for us it's more the constraints, mm. some of the constraints we're, um, that are put on us, but also the fact that there's different aspirations between individual players and staff members and, and things like that. So when Jesse and I sat down and, and thought that it would be a good idea just to reflect <laughs> on um, yeah, especially this year, um, we felt, I think in summary, for lack of a better term, that we had a pretty successful season and we've created something that hopefully we can continue to build on in the future, um, whether that's through uh, connection with the Melbourne Footy Club, um, connection through Casey, the region, which we think is really important as well. Um, they've been fantastic to us. And even last night, so mm -hmm. you went to the netball, obviously. Yeah, Casey, Casey V, Peninsula Waves. Um, yeah, the crowd there is incredible. So yeah. trying to tap in and build that relationship mm -hmm. with them, I thought of missed opportunity, share the name. We've got we share the same logos and sponsors. Um, and really, other than this year, like in the gym with us in pre season. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so what more can we do? So already starting those discussions of yeah. um, us as footy players doing a netball session. And then there's netball as well. Yeah. session. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like just seeing how terrible we look. Um, <laughs> But yeah, little things like that will make a huge difference. And I think the relationship is really important to build on. And um, yeah, we haven't done that successfully yeah. yet. So that's yeah. next year's plan. And I guess, Brooke, you're, you're here four years now? Three years? Four. So this will be, next year will be the fifth. Yeah. Fifth. Huge. So what's the, I guess, from your point of view, what, firstly, what, what are the changes you've seen or what's the evolution you've seen in the club over the last five years? But more so, where do you see it heading? Yeah. Um, and also from the point of view for me, it's, it's where does Casey, the connection to the community sit? Yeah. Well, I think to begin with, these discussions were never sort of brought up. When I was just coming in as a 17, 18-year-old, there wasn't this open platform where it's let's discuss about how we can benefit the club more so off the field. It was more so on the field, on the field, um, weight, weight training, running training, whatever it might have been. It was never a matter of our connection to the community um, the case of council, um, VFL, netball, like there was none of that discussed. And I think coming in um, at that age, the professionalism, it didn't feel um, at the level that it should have been um, because it was my first exposure year to this sort of elite level. It was, it, yeah, it sort of changed my perspective on um, the level we were at coming into this year and even last year, it was a massive change. Like it was getting to do those community hours was huge. Like I'd never thought that it'd be so beneficial for us mm. and the, the wider community. Um, so little things like that um, and through the change we've done over the last two years, it's surreal to think what next year has to hold. And I think it's what Jesse said, building those relationships on the VFL um, netball side of things um, and all that sort of stuff as well, yeah. I remember, Oyster, you shared a story with me a while ago about the community <laughs> stuff um, where you probably didn't realise the impact. Now, obviously, you're a Melbourne footballer, which is, um, for me personally, coaching you at Casey for the first for my first year and then seeing you um, get an opportunity at AFL level and play every game last season and be able to coach you through the midfield there. Um, I don't think there's any doubt that the reason you're consistent with what you do is because of your hard work, but I think it's also got to do with what you do off-field as well, not not only from a professionalism point of view, but from how you treat others. Um, do you comfortable sharing that story that you were telling me about? Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So um, 
yeah, the one with the diamonds from yeah. the basketball girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so well, the old club I used to play at, Sharks, um, in juniors, their under-14s team had asked me to come to speak to them about my pathway um, through, like, all the way up to juniors and all the big country stuff and then into college and everything and then football, just talk about the whole pathway and, like, then do a bit of, like, Q&A with the girls if they had any questions about, like, what they want to do and all of that. And so I spoke to them and it was probably, like, 45 minutes now I kind of think and it was really nice like to speak to them all and then um I found out like maybe a month later so through because I do coach under 14 team at Frankston and so the lady I coach with one of her friends who's a school teacher at Flinders one of those girls on the team had done a um like a powerpoint presentation about me and oh, it was like oh. my inspiration or my idol so it was oh, like good. that it was really sweet and she had sent the photo to the coach that I coach with and was just like oh I thought Liza might like to see this and there was like a little spiel about it and was oh, like oh, I feel like I relate to her because we both moved clubs oh. and we did this and I know she's a football player now but I still relate to her <laughs> and like all this stuff and it was really sweet and it was just nice and I told Pete about it straight away and I was like, oh, it just, I didn't realise that me going to speak to them for like 45 minutes an hour had that much of an impact on that girl at that time and made her feel like inspired to keep working hard and all of that. So I thought it was really special and I was just like, yeah, I thought Pete would enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, uh, one thing that I noticed when I came in two years ago was the, I didn't feel the group, including staff, understood the impact they yeah. have on other people. Absolutely. Like, people, because we're in a, and it's potentially because we're in a combined program, so we have the aspirations where players want to be and staff want to be at the top level, but they don't realise that there's people that want to be at VFL level as well. Yeah. And, like, that is a massive goal and objective for them to, to try and reach. Um, and I think we take that for granted. That's what I saw when I first walked in was how much everyone took for granted a spot on the list, for yeah. example. Yeah. Um, and then by... I guess making a bit of we made a, we made a decision and a shift to to shorten the list size greatly. Mm -hmm. um, that then made it even more impactful when you're on a list, mm -hmm. and it became um, something more to aspire to. I felt, mm -hmm. um, and I think in Westy's case, in your story, what I was thinking when you were sharing it with me was you the group don't realise. I don't think people in general realise the impact they have on yeah. even if it's one person. Mm -hmm. um, and who knows where, where that impact and that one conversation is, is going to lead that person, that young girl, moving forward. Um, so I thought that was, yeah, uh, all the community stuff that the players did. I remember post-season when, uh, when we lost to St Kilda in that prelim. I only got emotional when I started speaking about how the group went and did their community service work. Yeah. Um, and it's because what got me in that moment was it wasn't the fact that you – it's the fact that you allow yourselves to be coached or instructed the way that I foresee in your benefit. And you girls actually, and staff went out and actually did on. community service yeah. work. Um, and that's pretty, that's pretty amazing because a lot of people could have been easy for you to sit back and go, well, yeah. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to play football. So I'm not comfortable in going out and yeah. do it. And, and you had to sort it yourself yeah. and you did and, and then had to present on it. Yeah. So I thought that was, um, that was something that we definitely want to continue doing next season and, and finding different avenues of, of giving back to the Casey community. Um, from a footy sense, we'll talk footy for a sec. Um, stats. <laughs> Tell us about the I don't know. We won't talk about the stats. <laughs> um, obviously, like I was, we were talking about at the start, which was around what success looks like. Mm -hmm. So for us, when we first came in, and you'd remember it as well, was the three objectives we generally had was we need to make our AFLW players better, we need to get our VFLW players up to a standard, uh, to AFLW standards as close as possible and be draftable, uh, and we need to play finals to expose our VFL players to more draftable games, uh, as well as expose our AFLW talent to finals, mm -hmm. which are... Um, in the AFLW space, they, they were quite rare at the start yeah. because they didn't exist yeah. for, for the first three, four years. So um, we, would, we were able to do that. We did that. We did. And last year. And last year. Yeah. One final experience. Yeah. Final experience. Yeah. Did you, had, did you get a lot out of that, did you feel? What, did, what was... The first year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought that I got a lot out of um, that finals game, definitely. 
and it was against Essendon. I remember it clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember <laughs> losing. <laughs> I remember being up, and then they got a free kick, and then I'm pretty sure it was a 50 as well, put them right in front, and I was like, oh, because we were behind, and we worked so hard to get back in front. Um, but it was a next even from playing throughout that season. And I know I had like a lot of learning throughout that whole season. So everything was pretty new in football sense of it. But in comparison to like, um, I guess basketball finals is always that next level up. And that's exactly what it was for football as well. It was much more intense, high pressure um, game. And so I thought it was really experience for everybody to be able to play under that pressure and know that it was do or die. And so you had to get it done. And I thought we did, come through strong in the second half, we just fell short. short. Compare that to the final, <laughs> the first elimination final we played this year, because you played in home. Yeah, um, that also was, that also was high pressure. And um, I thought that girls stepped up and if people weren't able to like do their role or if we were lacking in anywhere, we had such a strong team overall that, everybody could step up in their position and get the job done. And I think that's why we got the win. So That was your first final? Yeah, yeah. First VFL final ever, how which was you, huge. Yeah, how <laughs> Scary. Did, how did you find it? <laughs> yeah, um, I sort of went, in it, went into it not setting any expectations for myself. Um, and I think that was sort of the feeling around the whole group. I think we knew we could do it. So it was more so just getting the job done, playing our roles and stuff like that. Um, like I've played, been lucky enough to play quite a few junior finals and even um, senior finals at like an under 18s level. Um, but yeah, the like as you said, the intensity, it's just the the, the whole feeling is just a different level. Um, and I think knowing that it was an elimination final, we sort of had to put our all out there. And personally, I knew. And I think a lot of the other girls knew as well, not many teams or players get to experience constant finals. So although it was an elimination final, we also knew that if we'd win this, we'd also get that second chance the two weeks prior mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So trying to take that out of your mind and just enjoy what we were playing um, because, as you said, there was so many other teams that didn't get the chance and there's some, some players on a list that may never experience playing a final. So my whole mindset around the thing was just being grateful to be here um, and knowing that the hard work that we've done during the season will get us over the line if we just, yeah, play to stick to our roles. Yeah. And I thought we, like, compared to from that prelim in Essendon the year before, Mm -hmm. like, I knew we were up for the fight always, but I also felt coming into that Collingwood game this season, I, I genuinely felt prepared. Yeah. Like, I knew Essendon, I was like, this could go either way. They're really strong. But, like, coming up against Collingwood, I was like, this team's so prepared that. There was no doubt. Yeah, it didn't, it no wasn't doubt. as, yeah, doubt. Yeah. it kind of felt like, yeah, we were really yeah. going to win this. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Do you think that's because you had that experience? Yeah, I think it probably year. was lack of experience last year. Yeah. Like, we had a yeah. we had a very new list and a new team as it was. Mm. So, putting us into an elimination final, I, not playing and watching, it was that lack of experience. Mm. So, coming into this final, being together for a year um, and then having some experienced players that have played last year, it was a better sort of step forward, yeah, to making a sort of footprint into our final mm. series, yeah. You could definitely tell the team chemistry was like a year more than yeah. what it was the previous yeah. year. And even like when I came back and played, it felt that way. It mm. felt like everybody was on the same page and knew what we, expectations from each other on what everyone was going to be doing around the footy or mm. like wherever their position is. And I think that definitely made a huge difference. Yes, yeah, I do agree. Yeah. Your, so your buy-in to Casey, right, it's because clubs do it differently. Mm. Right? We've seen that. So... Um, I was obviously fortunate enough to be part of Melbourne for the six years and come across in year five across to here. So that created, I guess, a a connection between Melbourne and Casey. And one of my roles was to ensure that the alignment was as strong as possible because with Melbourne um, see a very positive uh, growth opportunity here for the players that aren't playing, which will look a little bit different this Mm -hmm. season. I'm not sure how it will look. So I, I, I compared it, I guess, to you with, and not because you're a footballer now, as I keep reminding you, you're not a basketballer, <laughs> with your time at um, 
when you play it, what is it? In Australia or in America? In Australia. Knox. Yeah, a Knox, <laughs> yeah. Right, which is a Division One club or NBL One. NBL yeah. One. So you've got NBL One players that then go and play WNBL, yeah. right? I, I look at it as the same opportunity here where it's like a WNBL One opportunity from basketball sense and then you go and play yeah. your, your top league. What, why for you personally, because you're pretty passionate about Casey, I speak to you about it, What is it because you started here or is it because you see opportunity here? Or what, what's the driving force for you to want to keep coming back? Um Cause sorry, because it's a choice. Because yeah. we ask. Yeah, I, I definitely think it's an opportunity, um, and just because Casey is such a strong, strong club and like great environment to be in, and I think that alignment definitely does help. Like Jesse, you like you seeing the same people, and so you feel, I don't know, you're just comfortable, and you know that everybody's in it together and everybody's buying in. It's not like you have people from different areas with their own interests. It's like a common goal that everybody has. And I think, um, I yeah, it's just, I just think it's just, you just want to be a part of it. And there was no hesitation to come back because I knew it would only benefit Katie, um, Melbourne, myself, everybody around you. So I just thought there was really only benefits from coming back. To I think you're a part huge part in the belief for us girls personally, like coming, dropping back, playing with us a couple of games that you did. I think a lot of the younger girls and myself personally, you're a massive role model in making it to that next level is so possible. Your first year drafted. Like I think a lot of girls have that expectation of like, you know, crap, I'm 18. Yeah. Didn't get drafted this time round. I'm stressed out. Will the VFL club pick me up? Is it going to be the harder way around because I'm not on draft night? And I think you're a massive role model on you don't have to have the traditional pathway. Yeah, like yeah. there's so many different ways. And I think you inspired a lot of people coming back, the younger girls, the older girls, knowing that you built the culture last year for us. You've gone to Melbourne, but you've come back to your roots and you're so grateful still to be here so a lot of people take that for granted and I think to have you drop back down we're so grateful but I can see that you're grateful as well so I think it's a huge cultural thing because you can't say a few years ago that AFL girls were willing to drop down and sort of play a lower level and stuff like that so to have players that are not only willing to drop down but are wanting to drop down to help is huge. I think that's across the board too. Across like every the board. AFLW player that Absolutely, comes through yeah. is asked and they kind of give it yeah. the same that you do. Like and you're from like you came from here. Yeah. So to see the girls come back and like the feedback getting from the VFW players yeah. of how seamless it is. Just like, the respect both ways. I yeah. Think it's huge. It could be really handled poorly. Um well yeah, a lot of girls, I think in previous years, a lot of the girls, VFL girls have were quite devastated mm. like oh an AFL girl's dropping yeah. down I'm not going to play this week and this this and that but it's I think now the bigger picture is it's the development mm. of our club mm. like we can't be a good club if our AFLW is not a good club yeah and I think that's what's that's the change yeah so it's yeah it's really exciting and seeing the benefit like if they come to train or we're play, learning you're so much better. oh absolutely yeah yeah. Contest work, yep, I'll run up with Westy. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. The the pathway stuff about drafting, because you're unique, and I spoke about this with you the other day. So Westy's quite unique in the fact she comes in, gets drafted mid-year. Turns yeah, it up. <laughs> and then wins our BNF, yeah. goes and plays every game at Melbourne. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, as a as a mid um, in a grand final, like that's that's very very unique, right? So, and we were speaking about it because post draft this season, it was some players, um, some players had expectations potentially being drafted and yeah. didn't. Yeah. And the excuse me, the conversations around it for me were around the consistency of of being draftable. So I've seen so many players in the six years of Melbourne where they come in not just in Melbourne, but around the, the clubs where they come in for a year and then they get spat out. Get spat out. Um, and it seems to be, it's like a stigma on, on the player. Once they're drafted and they're spat out, no one wants to, it's like no one wants to touch them for some yeah. reason where yeah. no one really, I, I personally think it's, you need to understand the, the context behind yeah. why that happened. And Sammy Johnson is a great example, in my opinion, this year where 
So she's 30. 29. 30. 29. She's turning 30. Turning 30. She's turning 30. <laughs> um, and in my opinion, was to the standard, but didn't once out of the St Kilda system after one game, probably didn't, she fell out a lot of the game, yeah. which wasn't great. Um, and that could have happened at any club. That's mm. just what happens sometimes when I guess you have, and, and you could probably explain this to some extent, where you have an understanding or a vision of what you think an AFLW, you have this aspiration and goal, right? And then you get there, you have an experience that you didn't think was going to be that experience. Because I guess when you get drafted, you you think this is the pinnacle, this is going to be an amazing experience, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. And sometimes the, the hardest part of when you set your goals and objectives is you have to quickly, once you get it, you've got to quickly reset because if you don't reset one, then you don't... Yeah. Um, and then she's had that experience and then she fell out of love with the game. And yeah. She's not alone. And we've had a lot of yeah, conversations yeah. with players that have fallen out of love with the game because the expectations or what they had in their mind didn't really play out. But now she's had another opportunity at Melbourne um, to, to I think, show us the best now that she's a bit more experienced. Yeah, yeah, best more experience, of yeah, yeah, and had consistency over two years yeah. Yeah. where I think for yourself you're quite unique in that you had – you had consistency over two years, but for me, <laughs> oh, April, and that's that's pretty special. Like, yeah. You can't so understate true. understate that. Um, and I think some of our players. So we'll go through the the drafts for this year. Just this year, we had Talia the Hawks mid year early. early. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Tom. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then we had Lucy and Steph Wales. Yeah. So Lucy went to Hawthorne early pick. Steph went to Essendon early pick. Yeah. May have got redrafted by by oh, Melbourne. Man, and in my opinion, for May, got really good consistency over six weeks Was here. Yeah. 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 So um, I don't know how you. Yeah. It was massive. That yeah. I felt that. Yeah. Well. Totally different person, and and for her to to have something taken away. Um, I think gave her drive to Agreed. to then yeah, get some things back. in order and yeah. yeah and and then obviously Sammy, who um who goes there, pretty pretty amazing mm. I think for Incredible. for for the club to have them those players drafted and then I look back so you got we had the year before Imogen yeah um obviously yourself Ali Brown yeah. again probably someone that found consistency here over six weeks to then be drafted back to Melbourne yeah. and then Meg McDonald who. Um, again, just late. found consistency. Yeah, late to Richmond to yeah. an inactive spot. Yeah. Um, yeah and I think amazing. that's that's the conversations with players and any player that's out there. It's around, in my opinion, understanding that one good year shouldn't get you drafted, mm. in my opinion. It's consistency. Right? It's yeah. consistency over two, three years because if you get that consistency over two, three years, it means you're more likely to stay on a list. Yeah. Which is what it, that's what the aspiration yeah. should be. Yeah. It, it isn't to come in. Have an, have an experience and then get out because yeah. AFL clubs aren't there to give you an experience. No. You're there to no. work hard and get outcomes. Yeah, your footy changes. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it yeah. has to because yeah. um, that's part of being financially, you know, um, compensated for your time. Yeah. It's yeah. You're now, this is now business. You need to perform. Yeah. And I think the consistency through VFLW for any players that are concerned or, or un- overwhelmed by the fact they didn't get drafted after one good year. Yeah. yeah. I would say be patient. Let's get another get another good year, and then you're not only ready for AFLW potentially, but you're ready for longevity. Yeah. It's like consistency over that quick exposure. You don't want to. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's where the, the discussions that we have post draft really with anyone that's nominated that if it's not your night, it doesn't mean it won't. It's just not your night. It's not drafted at thirty yeah, years yeah. old, and you need another good VFLW yeah. season. Mm. And it will happen. Like hard work will pay off. Yeah. And if it's at AFLW level, or you're the best thing you can be at VFLW. Um, same with the NAB League girls. Like mm. you know, we were pretty strong t- uh, this year with our alignment with Danny Nong and Yippee, yeah, Yippee. Um, which is something that we worked pretty hard on. And to see seven, unreal, seven so unreal. of the listed girls yeah. that sort of came in and got some experience, and whether they played or not, they were better for being around women, yeah. know, either playing yeah. against women or seeing that professionalism through the dandy or hippie and then into us, mm. to then be able to walk into an AFLW. Like, I can only imagine as an 18-year-old kid walking straight into an AFLW program Ter- is terrifying. Yeah. So to sort of see a group here, uh, be coached by, you know, AFLW coaches and then preparation. be exposed to you guys and, you know, really good at VFLW plays as well. Like, 
they're better for it, regardless of if they yeah. played or not. So it's pretty exciting. Draft night was epic. It was. It was <laughs> yeah. We were just taking magnets off the magnet board. That's what we were doing. Well, I was at work and I had me watch on it. Oh, like insane. that WhatsApp and it was yeah. someone who drafted, congrats, congrats, yeah. congrats. Yeah. And I was like, oh, like it's, yeah, it's surreal. Yeah. It just shows that the progression over the two years has been totally worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's working. The Charlotte Blair ones, issue, because I had a good conversation to speak about the connection, Nick Cox down at Danny who was, I think, fantastic for um, for for their program, for our, our program with the players. Charlotte Blair is an interesting one because when we spoke, when she first came down, the, the conversations was around her contest, yeah. right, and whether that was to standard. And she knew that and we had that conversation. And then her ability over the eight-week period that she was here. Mm. And this is where you can't understate the importance of winning the Collingwood game. Because a lot of players, okay, we want to go a second chance. But what it did is it allowed our group to play as many games before the draft. Yeah. Absolutely. So that led up right to the draft. Yeah. Right? So that can never be understated. Yeah. And, and that's why it's so important that we try and continually reach the, the that at least the penultimate games mm-hmm. to give our players an opportunity yeah. to be exposed, exposed yeah, constantly. Yeah. Because in that six to eight week period, she there was enough glimpses for Collingwood to see, and she had a great game against yeah. Collingwood in that elimination yeah. final, to see that her contest was to standards. Was to but you don't know unless you play against Correct. women. Correct. And her confidence. Opinion. And her confidence. Yeah. On yeah. the wing, yeah. throwing the deep end. Yeah. yeah. She kept playing and good footy. Yeah. Then good got footy. Drafted yeah. Up. Like, yeah, exceptional story. Yeah. And it was nice that I, I saw a lot of the plays paired off. So um, obviously Steph went to Essendon with Amber, Amber, yeah. which was fantastic. Yeah. Um, who were the other Lucy guys? to Tiles yeah. at Hawks. Lucy went yeah. with Tiles to the Hawks. So yeah. And Mackenzie. Mackenzie went to the Hawks yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so that's... Um, the, Sammy and Maeve. <laughs> Sammy and Maeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah everyone exactly. kind of partnered off, which, yeah. is, which is really cool yeah. um, for the group. So... I guess for us moving forward, it's what does it need to look like for us now? That's the biggest query. There's obviously some questions and you as an AFLW listed player, we don't know where it's going to sit. Um, obviously, we've got a good, uh, we want to continue that really strong connection with Melbourne and um, we're heavily invested in that. But now with the seasons yeah. not being aligned, yeah. it's going to create so many more challenges. Ball game, yeah. yeah, more challenges, not, not only from first and foremost from the Melbourne point of view for getting their players games yeah. during the season. I'm not sure how that how they're going to navigate their way through that. Um, I'm sure Greater Minds and us will come up with a solution <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, and then for us, I guess, Jess, as, as with our Casey hats, it's what does our list mm. need to look like now? Yeah, we're losing 11 on draft night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a few spots there. So, yeah, water. a few trial nights or days coming up. Um, obviously, local footy still... Yep. going on so timing that pretty well to make sure that the girls are either fit enough and then coming in on the weekend um so yeah we'll have a we'll have a trial night in three weeks time to sort of capture the first load of uh of talent and then we'll probably have another two like we're aware that uh talent is going to go pretty quickly yeah um so it's us yeah sort of being prepared pretty early on it doesn't stop no i feel like we haven't stopped talking since they lost the final, uh, we should be having a break. But um, yeah, it's all really exciting stuff, though. Like it's not, it's not a grind. It's mm. um, yeah, the stuff that we're sort of putting in place with the relationship with you know um, the Casey Demons VNL or if it's Casey Council yeah. um, or the NAB League clubs. It's trying to yeah be better yeah than, and just keep growing from mm. the years previously. So yeah, a few trial nights to come. Um, which is pretty exciting. We'll get the the girls in. Yeah, I can't wait. Be really fun. I remember last year was quite good. I mean, we picked up Ali Dowler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on a trial night. Yeah, which is it's yeah. So it's exciting to see what talent will come through mm. these trial nights. Yeah, and the more like these are the girls that have played since junior footy now. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just a different space now. So um, yeah, build on our list and. Just yeah, crack into it in November. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. And speaking of staff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So Sarah Murphy, physio, yep. Geelong. Geelong. She's gone to Geelong. Matt Brewer obviously got an opportunity at Melbourne. Yeah. She's fantastic development and mid-coach. Yeah. Seb's gone. Into a community space. Community space Melbourne. at Melbourne. Yeah. And Bianca Lenarchich obviously mid-year went to the Gold Coast yes. as well. Five, five rounds with us and then see you later off to the Goldie. <laughs> So we need to find some staff yeah. as well. So yeah. um, it's 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 really exciting. The beauty, it's funny how opportunities work. And one of the best comments of the exit interviews or, or the end of season conversations with players, there was a couple that it's funny because I learned more about myself in mm. those 
conversations yes. than I think the players got out of themselves that <laughs> I gave to the players. So, you know, selfishly. Yeah, selfishly. <laughs> I, I took, but one of them was the only, and it was, whether it's true or not, it, it added up was the comment of the reason Talia got drafted this season was because Imo got drafted last season. Mm, she got the opportunity. Because she then gets the opportunity that Imo had. Yeah. And you don't think about it that way. And I remember during draft night and, Obviously, wrap to see all the players, right? Get drafted. <laughs> You're devastated right? too. Right? But at the same time, as you are seeing the magnets move off your board, yeah. you're going, well, that's what a lot of talent here. Mm. Like, and then when Sammy's name got read, obviously wrapped, but you've not only lost your inside mid, you've lost your best, one of your best captain. players, and you've lost your captain, yeah. right? A real cultural influence yeah. on, on this place. And then when, so that was on the Wednesday night, and then we did the, the interview or the exits on the Thursday night, and then I heard that comment. And then we started asking questions around, you know, we started discussing who could potentially fill that role. What do we need to do to, to try and fulfill it? But then as soon as you hear that, you're like, well, someone will step up Correct. and someone that we don't realise will step up. Yeah. Um, and that's Tali. Yeah. You know, that's the like the emo moving and Tali yeah. coming up. Now Who's Sammy's gone, who's next? Yeah. And that's the evolution of it. So, And that really perked me up. I yeah. was like, that's actually really exciting because I was a sad sack to some extent. You were devastated to lose that. I was like, that's hard, you yeah. know. He was crying. I was, I was there. It was she was there. Um, <laughs> it's, it, no, but it's all like the wowsers and the, yeah. like you, you're getting all this talent, talent. Yeah. out of, of your group. And... But then you realise there is talent within the group, though, and now they'll get more exposure. Okay. Who yeah. knows what's next? And yeah. that was honestly the most exciting mm. thought pattern that I had yeah. and, and, and continuing with yeah. um, because someone else will step up and I can't wait to see who it's going to be. Yeah. And there'll be players. It won't just yeah. be one. There'll be many. Yeah. Um, and that's that's really exciting because yeah. the reason, and it was funny because I used it with you, the reason Sammy more than likely probably got drafted because Westy went out Absolutely. of the midfield yeah. and got drafted. So she going. So Sammy goes from the wing to inside mid. Yeah. Gets drafted as an inside mid. That doesn't happen unless Westy's playing at Melbourne. Yeah. So yeah, she so, is. Yeah. So really, what we're saying is that Sammy's drafted because he is. So, uh, <laughs> we're playing together. And now you're playing together. Make so, her head any bigger? Uh, yeah. And now you're playing together. So that's yeah. That was that was really refreshing. Mm. And the exits in general for me with the playing group and the staff is. Is honestly one of the most. It's rewarding. It's rewarding, and there's so much to learn mm. from everyone. Yeah, like that's what I've realised is that the players and the staff have so many good ideas, yeah. and we just need to. One thing we need to do as a club, and we've spoken about, it, is continue to try and create an environment where they can let us know all that stuff. Yeah, you know, and and that yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. and. That was definitely one thing from the exits that I really, really highlighted the season for me was was those conversations from the players yeah. um, and how open they were Absolutely. about it. Um, I thought that was incredible. So, yeah, that's us. So moving forward, hard work. Yeah, that's right. Exciting. Very exciting. In your season, what does it look like for you now? Um, well, what have we done in four weeks now? Mm. Yeah, so we still have two oh, – yeah, to all of June, uh, July, sorry, and August until round one. But pre-season training's ramping up, so it's getting more and more intense each session, which is what we want. Um, and I think all the girls, we're all on the same page and we've done a lot of what we want from this season and what it's going to take for us to get to that next level. Because um, obviously, yeah, we got to the grand final, but we didn't win it, and that's the ultimate goal. So how do we live to get back to that point and then one more and win it? I think and so I think everyone's on the same page of what we want and the standards are just going up and everyone's training really hard but it feels really like already I feel yeah. like we're coming together like it yeah. feels really good and so each session is getting more and more competitive and I love all the competitive drills that have been implemented into trainings like Tuesday we have like a contest um cup <laughs> as Mick calls it and he's like sends us out and he's like good luck and we're like, it sounds like yeah, you're being rewarded. Yeah. You get a prize. Yeah. Competition. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, is it five minutes? Or it feels yeah. like, yeah. It's not that long. It's not that long, but it feels because it's like yeah. you're just going contest to contest and the drones are on you, yeah. what, counting who's winning what. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. And then there's like the leaderboard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to say and it's got like wins, and wins, yeah, wins correct. losses. You're a, you're a hit, aren't you? No, I was in the middle. I was, in, I was on plus two. There was a few. There was like Bano, Lil and Libby yeah. were plus four. They were winners. Um, I had the most wins though, 
Hilarious. I did the most contests. I'd done like 15. So, yeah. But like, not good enough, mate. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't enough in the class. I lost a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> so, you're better off having four. So you're better off. You win. Just not lose. Quality over quantity. Five wins. Quality over quantity. Come to this contest with me and I'll wait this person. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, I thought it's good because you just, I don't know. I really enjoy it because you just want to get after it. And by the end of like that five minutes, you're absolutely wrecked because mm. you've just been trying to do contest after contest because you're just trying to win and get all your wins yeah. up. And then if you lose, you're like, no, I have to give another one yeah. to neutralize the fact yeah. that I just lost. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And so, no, nah, it's been really good and like healthy competition that I think we need and um, doing it in the weight room as well, putting up everybody's like three RMs and our Nord board testing, our vertical jumps, just everything like high speed running, work rate. I think just showing it on the board is really nice for us to see like who's working hard and like where we need to get to to be that be on the leaderboard mm-hmm. and I think that's a big difference we didn't really have that last year and I think it's really motivating because now when we do like a handball games at the end it's like I have to get up and back because <laughs> yeah. they like they're showing who's got the best work rate so like it's like really, doesn't lose no. it's, it's really fun um well, I'm there, was, it. there was a good education session that Haley took this year I remember where we because we filmed training and you may I'm not sure if you were at the one where we discussed training standards. Yeah. And we literally showed a clip of the same drill yes. from uh, two different two weeks. Two different weeks. And the GPS yeah. numbers, because you players wear GPS, and the GPS number differences in the exact same yeah. drill from the same player. Mm. Yeah. And how the gap was just massive. Yeah. And that's just that's just effort. Yeah. And and a mindset. Yeah. I thought that was a really